life comes to an end, only Allah knows what will happen to you. Subhanallah. Even those you lived with would not know. They can make dua to Allah. They can ask Allah. They might bear witness that you were a good man. But whether you actually were or not is in the hands of Allah. Allah knows. Allah knows. Allah knows what lies behind the eye. You know, the deception of the eye. Someone looks at you and they are looking at you smiling. You don't know. For you as a human being, they could be a big deceiver. They could be someone who intends to harm you. That's very, very possible. But you have to ask Allah's help. Someone looks at you and subhanAllah, you, you have this warm feeling. Perhaps you may be correct, but you may be wrong. But who knows exactly what is in the heart? Ma tukhfi sudur, what is concealed in the heart? It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why some people whom we think were good, were actually not good, but Allah knows. Some people whom we think were bad, perhaps they were not bad, Allah knows. And this is why we say, when a person passes away, remember that the good deeds of that person, the bad has nothing to do with you, subhanallah. It's between them and Allah. It's better you speak about the good than the bad. I give you an example. When Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl, the son of Abu Jahl, who was the arch enemy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was coming forth, now accepting Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, Ikrima is about to come in, radiallahu anhu. Do not speak bad about his father. Imagine, who was his father? His father was Abu Jahl, the worst. Abu Jahl was a man who was cursed. He was a man who was really evil. When he died also, you know, it is reported that at the time of his death, he also uttered some bad words, which means he was more or less unrepentant. Allahu Akbar, may Allah safeguard us. He had harmed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a great way. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling his companions when Ikrima comes, don't speak bad about his father. Because, well, there are several reasons, but the one mentioned in the narration is that by you speaking bad about this man's father, it may hurt him and it does not harm the one who is dead. It doesn't harm him at all. How are you harming Abu Jahl by saying he's a bad man, he's a bad man? You didn't harm him at all. But you could be harming someone who's alive, brother. It was his father at the end of the day. No one wants to say, okay, praise the man because obviously he was Abu Jahl. But the bare minimum is remain silent. That's the bare minimum. This man, you will hurt him. What about if the man had declared a shahada? What about if he had said, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah? What if that was the case? It would become really a means of our own destruction to be speaking evil about the others who have gone away. It is not the remembrance of Allah to be speaking evil about others in their life, let alone their death. Imagine if Ghiba is to mention the evil of your brother in Islam, that if he were to hear it, he would feel bad. This is someone who is alive. And Allah says, Would you like for one of you to be eating the flesh of your dead brother and you, dis you detested it? This is, if the man is alive, what we are doing is already eating the, the flesh of his dead body. Dead because he's not there. What if he's already dead? One wonders where, where it would land us. Imagine if ghiba is so bad that the person is alive and we are considered consuming the carrion. Then what about if the man is dead? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may he make us